Howdy and welcome to Burley United Methodist Worship Services for Easter Sunday, 2023. We are so very glad that you could tune us in. And may this be a, a glorious day, for Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Our opening hymn this morning is, Christ the Lord is risen today. The call to worship on this Easter Sunday comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, as well as from the Gospels of John and Luke. I will read the light print. I'll ask you to respond in the bold. Rejoice and be glad. 
In God's new creation, as in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall live. Sounds of weeping are changed to joy, and cries of distress are turned to gladness. God has anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. God has raised Jesus from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. We are witnesses to all Jesus said and did, and we share the good news of Easter. God is our strength and our song and has become our salvation. Please join me in the prayer of the day. O God of pleasant vineyards and fulfilling days, come among us to establish your day of peace. May this place be as your holy mountain, where none shall hurt or destroy. Raise up with Christ to share in your realm, where every death is destroyed. Your work, O God, is marvelous in our eyes. Live mightily in our hearts. Amen. Our next hymn is The Day of Resurrection. On this Easter Sunday, we have many, many things to be thankful for. Most of all, a Savior who died for us, who loves us, and a God who resurrected him so that we too could have eternal life. For all of those things, let us come and pray and give thanksgiving to God. All honor and praise and glory are due your name, O God. You are God who caused the breath to fill our lungs, our eyes to see and our lips to proclaim your merciful name to all the nations. You awaken us this day with the dawn of a new age, with the sun rising on friend and foe alike, and the truth of Christ's redeeming resurrection of lies across the heavens. Christ is risen indeed to bring fulfillness of life to all of your people. We give you thanks that in Christ Jesus you reveal to us your word. As prophets listened to your voice, make us likewise attentive to the word that made flesh and thereby empowered to speak the truth of your love. We give you thanks that in Christ Jesus, you have opened the way for all to approach you in prayer. As he offered himself as a sacrifice that he was pleasing in your sight, 
We yearn for the day when all that we do will be in praise of your name. We confess Christ as the cornerstone of the church. And as we seek to respond to his call, may our conviction breed courage and our charity challenge others to approach you with hope. We give you thanks that even now in Christ Jesus, we taste the new wine of the gospel. Already the past has, fulfilled, has finished and gone. We gather this day as the community of witnesses to the meaning of Jesus for all human life. Fill us with the spirit of the resurrection as we seek to become your redemptive society. All of these things we pray in your most holy name. And we pray all these things in his name who taught his disciples when they prayed to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. From early on, the people would listen, come together on Easter morning, and they would hear the preacher say, he has risen. And the congregation would respond, he has risen indeed. If you have your Bibles with you, please open to the 20th chapter of John's Gospel. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. So she ran and came and found Simon Peter, the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter, the other disciple, went out and went toward the tomb, and the two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And he bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapping there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen, linens lying there. One cloth had been at Jesus' head and the other at his feet. And then a linen wrapping rolled up on a place by itself. And then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must be raised from the dead. And then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood there weeping outside the tomb and as she wept, she went over to look at the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to him, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I have ascended to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what she had said these things to her. Our Lord's resurrection is the only one found in scripture. There are other accounts of people being brought back to life, but that's not what's happening here. Just weeks before Jesus' death, he received an urgent message from his dear friends, Mary and Martha, that their own brother Lazarus himself was close to death, and they were desperately hoping that Jesus would come and heal him. But Jesus was delayed and did not arrive until after Lazarus died. And in a very dramatic fashion, Jesus goes to Lazarus's tomb and brings him back to life. We read in the next chapter that the chief priests had put a price on Lazarus's head because he had become exhibit number one of what Jesus was the miracle worker. 
Talk is one thing, but to bring a dead person back to life, that was hard for even the chief priests to refute. From John 11. And when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. And now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. And while Mary was staying at home, and Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not have died, but even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Here, Lazarus was fulfilling a needed role. It's his sisters, Mary and Martha, who were going through the five stages of grief. Grief sometimes comes out as half questions, half anger, which only seems to fit where Martha is emotionally. Lord! If you had only been here, things would have been different. I have heard people say these words to God, Lord, if you had only changed that green light to red, that accident would not have happened. If I hadn't run out of gas, I'd have still had my job. If my car had not skidded off the road, everybody would be home safe in their beds tonight. Today's message is for those who identify with Mary and Martha. And the verse that pops out to me this year was Martha's response to Jesus. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on that last day. The idea of Mary's concept, of, of Martha's concept of the resurrection came from the Old Testament. It was a belief that the Pharisees also held on to. But even their idea of resurrection was something that would happen on the last day, not something that would occur now. Jesus goes on to say, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. To me, the most important words of our Lord is not resurrection or life, but believe or trust, depending on your translation. For in the Greek, those two words are interchangeable. Let me again finish the passage. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Now, let me replace the word believe with the word trust, and I hope you will see that there is no difference. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who trust in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and trusts in me will never die do you trust this? And they said to him, yes, Lord, I trust that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming to the world. I hope you are in agreement with me that there is no difference between the word believe and trust. We truly believe in someone when we are able to put our trust in that person. Karl Barth, my favorite 20th century church leader, compared his relationship with God to a person whose job it was to ring the bell of a village. One evening, he climbed to the circular stairway up the bell tower, and as he got near the top, he loses his balance, and he starts to fall into the dark abyss he reaches out to grasp for the handrail, but instead his arms wind around the rope of the bell. And he holds on that rope for his life. And in doing so, we hear 
the loud gongs pealing out, the bell shattering the silence of the still and silent night. It is in those times of desperation when he felt that there was nowhere else to turn to and he discovered the sureness of God's presence in his life. The great goal of a spiritual's life is not only to believe in God, but to believe God. It's a trust issue. Having been emotionally thrown into the deep end of the pool to deal with the issues of life and death as a second grader, I was never willing to play the cards I was dealt with throughout my life. I was always unsuccessfully sought the opportunity for a redeal. Unlike so many others who sought on to hold on to the old, I was always willing to strike out and to venture into the unknown, like joining the army and going into basic training when I was 36. The reality of Jesus' resurrection, which we have come to celebrate today, would have never occurred without the crucifixion three days before. There must always be a Good Friday for an Easter to occur. Easter occurs not in spite of death, but because of it. Christian faith offers hope in face of death squarely and moves through it, not around it. Only when we accept the things that we cannot change and remain open to God's power, to the experience, new things we can discover, like a new and true resurrection. Resurrection is not the same as resuscitation. Resurrection is not the same as CPR. Resurrection is a new life where resuscitation is just having the things the way they were before. Jesus came not to restore life, but to transform life. Our Lord did not say, I give you resurrection of a life. If Jesus had, I don't think the crowds would have ever left him alone. Rather, he said that he is the resurrection and the life. We find new life in him. The natural progression within the church is to go from I am to we are in that God seeks to be revealed in you. God wants to be known. There is one thing to know about God. What is read in the reading that the Bible provides but when we usher into the Holy Spirit into our lives as you read scripture, then you are in constant and thoughtful prayer. You go from knowing about God to knowing God. And that's a huge difference. The more we know the one who said, I am the resurrection and the life, the, way, the more we discover the possibilities in living. As third graders come into Mrs. Clark's Sunday school class four weeks before Easter, most of them had remembered to bring an empty shoebox from home. Mrs. Clark told each student that for the next three weeks, that a portion of class would be devoted to working on their version of Easter. They could take the box home and then bring it back before Easter and then with their parents, they could help with their parents, could help them and bring everything together and everyone would share what they had prepared. Kathy, the loudmouth overachiever, started to write on that first Sunday and let everyone know how wonderful her Easter shoebox presentation would be. Sarah, the quiet, the artistic one in the class also began to come up with ideas and started to gather supplies for her box. Many of the others 
in class would stop by where Sarah was sitting and ask for help, which made Kathy very upset. Other students in the class also began to work on their projects, except Charlie. Charlie struggled in class. He didn't read very well, nor did he read aloud very quickly. He was nice to all the students and kind to Mrs. Clark, but the other students were so busy with their own project that no one had stopped to see what Charlie was doing. So on Easter Sunday, all the girls were dressed in their new clothes, and the boys too, and all brought their shoebox to Mrs. Clark's Sunday school class for show and tell. And first was Kathy, of course, and her box was flawless. It looked like it had been done by some college student, which it probably was. But nevertheless, all the students and even Mrs. Clark ooed and awed over what Kathy brought in. And next was Sarah and her shoebox. It was just as spectacular and her artistic renderings of the story of Jesus and Easter were amazing. And as the other kids came forward and shared their shoeboxes, some were biblical, while others were more about bunnies and flowers and butterflies. And finally, it was Charlie's turn. And just by the way Charlie was carrying his box, one could tell that there wasn't much in it. And when Charlie opened up his box, there was nothing glued to it. And when Charlie showed the other students in the room, they began to laugh. And Mrs. Clark quickly hushed the students and to help Charlie, she began to talk to him and ask him leading questions. Charlie! Mrs. Clark asked, tell me about your shoebox. Charlie said, it's empty. I can see that, Charlie. Tell us more. My shoebox is Jesus' tomb. It's empty. That's the story of Easter. Amen, said Mrs. Clark. He has risen. He has risen indeed.
And our final hymn this Easter morning is, He Lives. And on this Easter morning, when the disciples and the women came to the tomb, they saw it empty. And then they saw Jesus. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Go in peace. <laughs>